Hi guys, welcome to a series of video about the new features of Golem 5.2. As you can see, I'm running your Golem 5.2. Um, as I said into the previous video, do not worry about those numbers here. Uh, it's because I'm running a dev version, but as soon as you're having 5.2 here, you're actually good to go. In this video, uh, I want mainly introduce what's been uh, changed in terms of workflow between the previous version, so 5.1.1, and that new version, which is 5.2. So that video is um, mostly targeted to people who've been using Golem before, especially version 5, and uh, want to know more about uh, what's changed. So here I'm having a super quick simulation, uh, just a couple of hundred of characters uh, walking. I'm in a simulation mode, which means I can select a guy here, see the different behaviors he's playing. Right now, I'm just playing a motion behavior with some uh, some tiny variation uh, between the different characters. So let's say I want to render um, that, uh, that simulation with Golem 5.2. So previously, uh, when I was using 5.1, I had to export the simulation uh, into a cache. And um, I could create a simulation cache proxy. So I could use that, that node to see how does the simulation look like. But if I wanted to render that crowd, I needed to switch to the rendering engine I wanted to use and I had to create a render proxy for that rendering engine. So if I were using Arnold, I had to create a render proxy for Arnold. If I was going to use a render man, I had to create another uh, node for render man. And uh, the thing is, uh, when you create or when you import new simulations into your main scene, let's say you're having those walking guys here, but maybe you made a cache with some sitting guys that you want to put over there. Uh, where well, you could import those guys here, uh, recreate the simulation cache proxy so you could see where those guys are, uh, have to break a lot of connection and do a lot of stuff. So we kind of um, changed the workflow to make it better, to make it easier for people to use. So I'm going to show you how does that work now. So as I was saying, I'm in simulation mode and let's say I'm super happy with this and I want to render that crowd. So the thing which as not really changes, I want to actually bake my simulation into a simulation cache. So I'm not exporting, I'm not e exporting geometry here, I'm just exporting the cache. So uh, I'm selecting the cartoon I want to use here, start frame and frame, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to run the export, it's um, writing the simulation result into a simulation cache. And as soon as it's done, you can see that it has changed automatically uh, the mode of my simulation. So now I'm actually into simulation cache replay mode. So every time you're going to use the simulation exporter and you're going to export the crowd, uh, you're going to, at the end, switch back into cache replay. If it's the first time you, you do it, it's going to create a cache replay node, and the cache replay node uh, has all the information where you've been exporting your simulation. So it's saying, okay, simulation is being exported here, which is the name of the cache, etc., etc. Um, so this is the first thing. Let's say you want to change your behaviors. Uh, maybe you want to have all those guys synchronized. So right now they all have a different posture uh, because I'm adding some variation on stat person. So I can change my uh, my stat person here, make sure that they are all synchronized. If I just run the same here, you, you're not seeing the different result there. They're all still playing the previous animation. That's because I'm still in cache replay mode. So if you want to see the, resu the result of the simulation, you have to go back into simulation mode. So if I go back into simulation mode here, now I can read the same, and I can see that on the first frame, they are running the same posture. And now I can re-export my simulation with that new result. And at the end, when it's been exported, it will switch back into simulation cache replay. So now I'm back again into simulation cache replay. Another thing which may be handy and that you may want to know is, um, let's say finally I change my mind again and I want to rechange that start frame uh, instead of going to simulation mode, export, etc. etc. You can just go into the simulation exporter and run the export. That guy will make sure that it switched you uh, before into simulation mode and at the end it will re put you into cat replay mode. So now I have all my characters desynchronized on the first frame. So it has switched back into sim mode. Every time you export the sim, it switched back into simulation mode export the cache with the updated simulation results, and then at the end, it, it puts you back again into cache replay mode. So that's one of the stuff you may want to know, which has changed a bit between um, 5.1 and uh, 5.2. So that's one thing. 
So what about rendering that crap? So you may have noticed, but I kind of haven't spoke about it yet. Into the cache proxy node, there is no more stuff. So cache proxy node has the same attributes than before. Uh, you can enable it, disable it, which is uh, something pretty regular you had before. But you may see that next to the cache proxy node, there's something now called render proxy. So it means that now attach to every cache proxy node there's a render proxy, which is super handy because every time you're going to create or import a cache into your scene, it will be ready to render out of the box. And the nice thing about the render proxy node is it inherits from the same attributes here. So uh, let's say you change something there, it's going to change it here as well. So you're going to render exactly what you see into the viewport, which is like super handy. Obviously, there are some attributes which are specific to the rendering here, like what are the motion blur attributes? Uh, do you want to use the first term calling? Uh, some advanced attribute about object ID paths. So everything you had before into your Arnold render proxy, your random and render proxy, they're all now all into the same place, which is going to be the render proxy. There are also some attributes which are um, rendering engine dependent. There's a panel for Arnold here where you can specify What's your subdivision attribute? Do you want it to make it opaque, self shadows, etc., etc.? There's some attributes for V-Ray, subdivision attributes specific to V-Ray as well. Uh, some length linking attributes as well. If you want to render in 3ds Max, this is where you're gonna be able to export as we are seeing. Some random man attributes, same system, subdivision, advanced. If you want to export into Kitana, uh, this is where you're gonna export your rip file. So everything takes place here, which means you are actually, as soon as you're in cache replay mode, as soon as this is green here, and you can see that icon there with that tiny film icon next to the foot of the character, you're actually ready to render. And just to make my points, I'm gonna just have a light here for Arnold, and I'm gonna press render out of the box. And uh, hopefully that should render, or or not. Oh, okay, because uh, I mean, I was in Maya software, so let's switch into Arnold render and render, and now I should get my characters render into the viewport. And uh, if you change your rendering engine, you'll let's say I switch to Mentorware right after, I'll be able to render all of the box with Mentor. Okay, so now I have my characters rendered with Arnold. Uh, some pretty nice thing is I can take my cache proxy node here and I can apply uh, you know a couple of transformation on top of my cache. Let's say I want to maybe change your I'm not sure what I, I, I'd like to do this, but I can change my transform onto my cache proxy node, and this is going to be inherited by the render proxy. So if I just render this now, I don't have to make sure that my render proxy node is synchronized with my cache proxy node. I should get, once again, exactly what I have into the viewport. So what I see is exactly what I get, which is, once again, super handy. Um, I guess that's uh, pretty everything I wanted to show you. So. Uh, just the, the stuff you need to uh, take into account and maybe keep in mind out of this video is if you're in a simulation mode, you can't render anymore because cache proxy mode is actually disabled. So you can see here it's actually disabled and the render proxy is also disabled. So if you're actually rendering this, you don't get the crowd, you just get your environment. So if you want to render the crowd, you want to make sure that there's a cache proxy mode in your scene and you're in cache proxy mode. So what once again what you see in the viewport is exactly what you get into the viewport into the rendering end. Um, so that's pretty it. Uh, I'm gonna do another video about the simulation cast library that uh, you may want to check out. Um, and uh, I hope it makes sense and uh, see you into the next video.